Hello in game fans, for as much as I love roguelite platformers and metroidvanias, the straightforward 2D action platformer is also of interest if you just want an action-packed, great playing experience that should be relatively straightforward, but more importantly, easily completable. So here are 30 recommendations to look forward to. The first 5 titles were previously covered since I'm very excited by these, but for brevity, I'll rush through them, beginning with Cyber Shadow which is not a metroidvania, but awesome pixel art, fast action and just fantastic vibes overall gives me a great feeling about this. Fallen Leaf is another 8-bit excellent title that looks retro in all the right ways, especially in the UI, and does to some extent remind me of Mega Man which is a good thing. The other ninja title that has got people talking is Bushiden, once again killing it in terms of pixel art which is 16-bit spectacular and looks very well made as well. Another action-packed title is Steel Assault which has copious use of scan lines which are mixed about but some impressive looking bosses and a unique zipline mechanic makes this of interest. And to round off the quick picks, we have Mighty Goose. Essentially Metal Slug but you play as an agent of chaos which we have all come to know and love through Untitled Ghost Game. Super fast action with a ton of bullets, explosions and vehicles, this is not to be missed. For more of my thoughts on these, do check out the video in the comments below but let's get into the new games. Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX is perhaps not so indie since while it is being made by a smaller team, it is based on a character owned by Sega, hence a spot on the list. It looks like a faithful remake in HD in the same way that Monster Boy was revived so I'm curious about this even though I have no nostalgia for the original. Ego Knight Paradox is a stylish pixel art action platformer with some sick max, so of course I'm in, having caught my attention when it had its Kickstarter campaign which concluded successfully. Play as a rookie Ego Knight pilot sent to confront a mysterious new enemy who then realizes that these are his former friends so he must do what he can to save the day and to figure out why. Of course, I do love the pixel art and I'm very curious as to the overall structure and story of this game. If you love robots, a no-brainer title is Bot Gaiden, a game with a focus on speedrunning as evidenced by the timer on screen, but does have an interesting hand-drawn art style and a very vibrant look. Speed and momentum are key here, where bosses get more health the longer that you take to get to them, and faster finishes enable upgrades and upgrades enable faster finishes, so it's that sort of fast, hectic experience that's totally worth a look. While the developer of Smelter are trying to avoid the comparisons to Act Razor, I won't fault you if you make that connection since this mixes side-scrolling 2D platforming with a strategy management layer. Another title which impresses with the pixel art, you play as Eve searching for Adam, teaming up with a mysterious winged creature known as Smelter in order to do so.
The 2D platforming is combined with some light RPG elements with 3 skill sets and 40 upgrades to choose from. And in the strategy layer, you can build and expand your base while fending off enemies in what looks like tower defense type gameplay. I do love the original Egg Razor and nothing has come quite close to it, so I do believe that there's certainly space in indie games for a breakout hit. I know that at least one of you requested a video on games like Mega Man X, and surprisingly, there have not been that many, but the title of interest is Giga Buster, looking similar in terms of animations and control, but with a sweet art style as well. This has you fighting against a mega corporation with 9 companies split into 3 sets of 3 which seems similar to the classic Mega Man level select screen and you start right off the bat with an air dash, double jump and so on adding to the fluidity of movement. Additional upgrades would only expand upon these even further so it looks like another awesome entry with one of the more unique looks. While the Steam store page does state a 2019 release window, which has obviously since passed, this developer is active on Twitter and this game still seems to be in development. I've covered Aeon Drive before, where the speedrunning focused action platformer looks right up my alley, combining pixel art, an intriguing setting of Cyberpunk Barcelona, and a teleportation blink dagger as the main mechanic. It looks super challenging, and the main character seems to have gotten a visual upgrade since we last saw this, so fingers crossed this will turn out well. A pixel art title of interest is Golden Force, one which looks very retro and would not be out of place if comparisons were made to games like Wonder Boy. Fight against the King of Demons as you seek to protect the paradise of Muscle Island. This is from the developer of the underrated Metroidvania title, Agalos, and does look fantastic, but has only been confirmed for consoles at the moment. A Japanese title that caught my eye during the Indie Live Expo was Kojin Sword of Rewind another fantastic looking action game with what I would describe as Japanese pixel art. It does have a cool futuristic sci-fi vibe from the enemies, a talking sword, the ability to deflect projectiles and slow down time, so it's a little bit of everything from Super Time Force to Transistor. Developer Mega Cat Studios have been doing their own weird and cool stuff off to the side, making games for older consoles in 2020, with Phantom Gear on the Genesis being of interest. Being limited by the hardware, this has resulted in one of the more authentic looking 16-bit platformers that looks retro in design as well. Wonderful look and looks like great old school fun, this gets on the list for the nostalgia alone. Another long in development title is Muja. Another ninja title, but this time where you play as a cat. It looks fairly straightforward with having to go through a level, attacking enemies, avoiding traps, and jumping on platforms, all combined with quite a classic look. 
There are, however, secrets and collectibles as well, and while the Steam page does not seem to be updated, this developer has been posting videos on their YouTube channel, which is where this video is from, so I'm still keeping an eye on this. I've also been keeping an eye on Gravity Circuit, which has one of the more interesting art styles, where characters are primarily a single colour but with different shades, which is used quite cleverly to distinguish between enemies and allies. It's a melee focused brawler with a grappling hook which is always fun, and the action and animations look very fluid indeed. In perhaps some unfortunate news, the release date on the Steam page has been completely removed, so I'll just mark this as TBA, but the developer is active on Twitter and have been sharing updates, so stay tuned and I'll let you know when this is ready. I'm a sucker for bright and vibrant art styles, and a title which fits the bill is Jack X. It's an X-tossing platforming experience inspired by both Filipino and Norse mythology, which is an interesting mix with co-op support both in the campaign and a party mode which should be fun. Web did impress some of you during one of the Steam game festivals, and is a light-hearted platformer about exploring and adventuring your way through the world, about the little spider on an adventure to save her boyfriend from a bird. The swinging and grappling mechanics are the highlights, which feel very good indeed, with a number of interesting puzzle mechanics that involve spinning webs as well. This looks super cute to me, although arachnophobes be worn, but the cutesy vibes do help, I think. Attention all military personnel, be on the lookout for the vigilante- I just talked about developer Suits and Sandals, which put out a Picross game recently with War Go being their next major release. This of course looks a little bit like Metal Slug, but with more upgrade options and such, but it does still look fantastic and is coming to us from the developer of Chimera, Destroy All Monster Girls, so of course it's of interest. A title which impressed with the look is Necro Fugitive, a pixel art action title where you play as an evil shapeshifter attempting to escape the justice of the realm pursued by lawmen and bounty hunters alike. The highlight has to be the ability to transform into a demon granting a massive surge of power, and I'm curious as to the overall structure of this game. It did go to Kickstarter but was unsuccessful, but as far as I know, this project is still in development and is slated for sometime next year. Absolutely love the look of Linked Mask, one which is inspired by the Game Boy era, especially in terms of visuals, but is an action platformer with multiple stages where the different masks grant you different abilities.
Speaking of face coverings, Kaze and the World Masks is a 90s inspired platformer which simply looks awesome and given that it's been in these videos for quite some time, I'm pretty confident that it will make 2021. Name your pick from the 90s and this would probably evoke some elements from it, from Earthworm Jim to Sonic, where again, the different masks grant our protagonist various abilities like flight or the ability to swim. Fantastic look as well and cannot wait for this. One more long in development title to the list with Beard Blade, where this trailer is actually from 2016, but the developers are still working on it. The decision to go with pixel art was the right one in hindsight, since it looks just as good in 2020, and I do like the tropical setting with pirates as the main enemy. You'll never know when these long in development titles get releases, as was the case with Radio the Universe recently, so certainly keeping an eye on this. A fantastic title which I've been keeping an eye on is Clan O'Connell and the Crown of the Stag. A stunningly beautiful 2D puzzle platformer which allows you to swap between three characters on the fly, giving me just a little bit of a Lost Vikings vibe, although it's not exactly the same thing. Our three heroes do need to stop the mother of demons from killing their father and obtaining the crown of the stag, having to battle through her minions in order to do so. Also gives me a little bit of a guacamelee vibe, so I'm certainly looking forward to this and it's one of the rare titles on the list to actually have a release date. Much like Unto the End just released, Song of Iron looks like a low fantasy, brutal, cinematic action platformer, this time using 3D models but giving off a similar vibe which is awesome. I do like the use of silhouettes in this, which combined with the brutal action makes it of interest to me. We kick off the top 5 games not yet covered with the 8-bit excellent Bones and Bullets, where you play as an undead soldier hell-bent on saving the world from an evil tyrant. Another title which has been on my watch list is Tales of Iron, announced in January 2019, but we have not heard much from it since then. It's a stylish action platformer where you play as a rat, heir to the throne, but your kingdom is invaded by the Iron Frog. I do like the steampunkish designs of the armor and vehicles, where like Hollow Knight, this reimagines the miniature world with enemies such as beetles and bugs being of concern.
Pixel artist Hank Niebog is well recognized for his particular art style and the quality of his work, with the upcoming Tiny Thor being one such title. It's 16-bit spectacular, where you play as the young god of thunder building the legendary hammer, going on an adventure in the kingdom. Most interestingly, the ability for the hammer to ricochet off surfaces and to return to you looks like a fun mechanic to play with, being used in both combat and puzzles. Needless to say, big fan of the look, with very fluid animations as well and I cannot wait to play, although this has long been in development and we still do not have a date. If I remember correctly, Olia was revealed during the Devolver Direct this year in a segment that was weird even for them, but this pixel art title does look awesome to me, although some of you did disagree. Play as a man building a magical harpoon, shipwrecked and trapped in a foreign land and must find his way home. A title which impressed me with the look is Charge Blade Hero, a 2D hack and slash platformer telling a story of gods and heroes. Our protagonist looks very much like Cloud, with some fantastic looking action, and really, that's all I need to know, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos, and I will see you after the jump.